Welcome everyone to the Tuesday night talk. Tonight's topic is communication with confidence or confidence in communication. <laughs> and our speaker this evening is Dr. Vinod Mungopara, but he likes to go by just Vinod. And uh, so Vinod, Take it away, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. <clears throat> and so some theoretical aspects of confidence. <clears throat> what is confidence? It is a feeling that um, I can do it. Very simple words. Feeling of uh, my abilities and my qualities, you know, a, a conviction that I can do it. So uh, that is one part of the definition. Uh, but the more importantly, um, confidence is something that is deeper than that. In general uh, terms, when we speak about confidence, uh, I feel good about doing something that can be shaken by uh, situations. And in a spiritual way, that is not uh, full definition of confidence. Confidence is something that cannot be moved or shaken by anything internal or external. It remains. And that's what we want to learn. We don't want to learn the fake confidence that, that uh, something can, uh, you know, break it. We want to be real confident. And uh, so that is a uh, spiritual uh, definition of the uh, confidence. Um, <clears throat> one uh, line about uh, why we want to be confident. You know, we want to be uh, confident because we want to be winner. We live here in this world and uh, we come across many things and we, we want to succeed in everything that we do. That's why we want to do that. And uh, one line about communication, it's a very broad term. And uh, it uh, can mean many things uh, like singing, uh, acting, dancing, all that. But uh, for today's talk, I will keep it to the talking part for simplicity. Sometimes uh, some people uh, include the listening also as a communication. Uh, but once we learn how to speak, then we can, we can learn how to sing and do other things. The principle remains the same. And so I'm going to use a PowerPoint uh, that uh, will uh, allow us to learn this in a better way. You'll have visual. So I'm going to share that. And uh, we're going to, there we go, talk about the confidence. All right, so communicate with confidence. And this is the definition that we just talked about. Uh, the most important part of this definition is it cannot change with fluctuation within or outside, cannot. The world definition of confidence, it will move. But this, we don't want to learn that. This is what we want to learn. Uh, there is a saying called Nishche Buddhi Vijayanti in Hindi. In English, confident intellect will win. You know, some people uh, trans translate that as loving intellect wins. Means the same thing. You have confidence, uh, loving confidence in God, you're going to win. So Nishche Buddhi Vijayanti. And so there are three words, nischay, nischit, nischint, and nischit. Uh, it's a rhyming word, Hindi. Confidence, worryless, certain, sure. And so that leads to victory. So once you feel, once you're confident, uh, you don't have any worries, and then you're certain. And that's half victory right there. 
So uh, yeah, Hindi is an interesting language where you can rhyme the words and uh, just learning that rhyming words gives you the whole context. So nishche, nishchint, nishchit. Okay, so let's go to straight to what is needed to become confident. Uh, so number one, accuracy. How I communicate and how accurate that is. It has to do a lot with my confidence. If I can accurately communicate what I want to say, then I feel confident that my, my task is accomplished. Uh, one definition of communication is, uh, it has uh, communication is how I uh, put across myself to others. And uh, accuracy has two components. One is how accurately I can come up with something that I want to say. Right? How accurately I can express myself. That's one part of the accurate communication. The second more important part, you know, is how I can make you experience what I am experiencing. So that is the most important part. I can be the best speaker in the world, but if you did not get it, that's half, that's not a communication. You need to be able to experience what I'm saying. So this is the, the full uh, understanding of accuracy. Make others experience what you experience. Now with that kind of a definition, just uh, ask a question to yourself. Are you able to communicate accurately? Just ask that question and see what the answer comes. You know, the, most of the time the answer will come no. I can talk everything, but not, it's not necessary that the other person has understood what I want to say. So it is inaccurate. And uh, what's the reason for the inaccuracy? Spirituality teaches us that the inaccuracy or mistakes is because of the body consciousness. So number one cause for the inaccurate communication is body consciousness. And so what's needed for that? We need to be soul conscious. So that's the first uh, a tool that we need to have to learn to be confident. Next, we need to be very clear what we want to express. And for that, we need two things. We need concentration power and we need, we need more of the concentration power. We need less of the clutter. So if I want to say something and if I diverge from what I want to say, then it's a missing point. So concentration power means what? What am I concentrating? I'm speaking something out, but what's the, what is the, what are the uh, faculties that I'm concentrating or putting in one, one line? These are my thoughts, emotions, attitude, and memory. Everything aligned inside in a positive direction, that's say concentration. So inside out, I'm focused to one goal. That is concentration. And the goal is to make you understand or experience what I want to say. And for that, we need what is called as a clear intellect. In spiritual language, we say we need to have a clear line of intellect. That means uh, my uh, connection of connection of my intellect with the Supreme Soul. That has to be open. There should not be any obstruction there. There should not be any waste thought there. And when my intellect is in contact with the Supreme Soul, then only I can have a full concentration. 
if my con contact with the Supreme is lost and I can put my thoughts and words and everything in one line, I'm still, it's lacking on that concentration. And clutter, uh, you know, that's very simple to understand. I don't need to use any, uh, anything that's not needed. Simple language is all that is needed. Uh, I, and then don't pretend. You know, most of the time when we communicate, we a lot of time we will pretend. Uh, Sister Elizabeth is, can uh, talk nicely. So if I want to, uh, if I pretend to be like that, then I will uh, lose that simplicity that I have. I need to remain to myself, don't compare. And, and most importantly, I need to give priority to the essence. What I want to communicate, I just need to stay focused to that. I can tell some stories, etc., but then uh, don't wear too much where you have to go. It would be lovely to hear an example. I was just thinking to myself, in your work, how has this proved to be, um, you know, important to have clarity in what you're doing in a spiritual sense? Yes. Oh, that, that's a very good uh, point to understand. Uh, once you understand the focus, it's like just the one central point. Everything else can just, you can build around that. And you can make it so nicely. You can present it beautifully also. And also without losing the intent of what you want to do. For example, if I want uh, my uh, the people who work for me to do some task, I will keep that as my central point and direct them, but also uh, don't just stay very rigid about that. I can use some other things like stories, etc. But then main point is how much weight I give to what. I need to give more importance to that um, essence. And so they love it and they get the message also. And the work is done. One, one statement, work is done. And then um, it, it makes it very interesting also. Uh, we lost your voice. Sorry. It, then it, it, what it sounds like is you're also building trust and confidence in others for your vision, for the task for them, or in you. When you're clear, then others will trust you. True. True. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. So uh, that's uh, important to the second point. And let's go to number three, the value. <laughs> now, uh, the thing about value is uh, the words or the, the topic, what I want to communicate, if the value of that is higher, then it is more easily received by, by you. The higher the value, what I'm going to speak, the better is it is received by you. The less is the effort on my part and the more confident I feel. So whatever I speak, if the value of that is higher, then I don't have to struggle at all. I just uh, present it the way I want and you will get it. And so that's the importance of that value. Anything that you do or speak, add value to it. And so it will become more like a, a service that you're doing for that other soul. Um, and then once it becomes a service, then uh, two benefits occur. Number one is, uh, uh, you know, in a spiritual speaking, when you are serving, uh, you are working for God. And then God will reward you with all the appreciation, 100% appreciation to you. And so you don't have to worry about appreciation from others. 
God is giving you 100% appreciation. Uh, secondly, uh, when you're doing service, you are an instrument. So all the blame and mistakes and everything, it goes to the boss. You are just an instrument and bosses, the supreme. So uh, I don't have to worry about the blame. Uh, one word of caution is uh, the, um, the praise. You know, some people praise when whatever you do, you say. And so if you're going to take the praise, then you have to take the blame also. You have to take the uh, dislikes also. If you want to, if you like what uh, people talk about you, then you have to face with what they will not like about you also sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's instrument consciousness. So these are important advantages. And so the important part is how do you elevate the value of something in a day-to-day -day life? And you can do this practice. It's very interesting. You can make everything, uh, simple things into a better, uh, having a higher value. And so uh, add sweetness, you know, you can add sweetness uh, in everything that you do. In, in this topic, when I'm talking, I, I can add sweetness by adding God's love, good wishes and pure feeling. Now question, question is, how do I add God's love in my words? How do I do that? And how does it work? And so the way to do that is I remain connected with God inside. And I receive his God. I receive his love. And I feel the God's love as I'm talking. And so my words will have God's, the flavor of God's love. And, and the way it works is you feel that love because it's coming from a very high place. And so my words will be flavored by that love. So that's how you do that. And good wishes means I have good, uh, good thinking for you. I wish good for you. And pure feelings is what I receive from you. I don't receive any negativity. Even if somebody is not uh, uh, thinking positive about me, I take it in a positive way. So these, these three things will add the sweetness and uh, the value of what I speak. And uh, another aspect is how I deliver. I have to deliver in a nice way. So talk sweetly, talk as sensefully and gently. You know, talk sweetly. How do I talk sweetly? Adding God's love and uh, good wishes. As sensefully means to remain uh, focused uh, to the central point and gently as uh, um, with humility. So when I'm, when I'm humble with the humility, if I give something, it is more easily received. I'm more likely to succeed in making you experience what I have to say So that. And Okay, yeah, this, the, uh, the next tool is fearlessness, to become fearless. That's a very important aspect of, of feeling, having that confidence. And uh, in this picture, as you can see, there is a Mowgli, Mowgli and Baloo, and uh, very happy. And uh, I use this uh, picture for uh, um, on purpose. You don't see any fear anywhere in this picture, but there is a reason for that. This is how you want to be fearless. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so fearlessness. Uh, the number one enemy of the confidence is a fear. You know, and the number one reason for the fear is body consciousness. I, when I'm in a body consciousness, I feel that fear because I'm a body, right? Anything can happen to it. 
And so the, re the, the question is, how do I become fearless while living here? We are living in this world. We are not living upstairs anywhere. And uh, we are doing things. Uh, so how do you become fearless? The fear will always be there, remember. So the way to become fearless is, is uh, overpower the mother of that fear. And the mother of the fear is attachment. So although I live in this body, I detach myself from the body. Then I don't have the fear because I am living in the body, but I'm not the body. That, that will make me fearless. And so uh, the, the one, the way to learn to be detached is there are three aspects that we have to do. One is a constant awareness that I'm a soul living in this body, not the body. Second, God is my companion. That should be a constant awareness. Constant awareness that God is my companion. And the third most important aspect is, is that word constant. That word constant. Because I can be aware that I'm a soul and I can be in a company with God, but not always then that fear will come when I'm not in company with God. The fear will come when I know I'm not thinking I'm a soul. And once the fear comes, then I have to battle with that fear. And, and when you are battling with a, a powerful enemy like that, you are, lie, you are risking to lose. You can, you can lose easily. You can win also, but you can lose also. So that possibility is uh, comes into play. You don't want to, you don't want that possibility also. You want to be a total winner. You need to be completely fearless. And, and for that, that word constant has to be there. When I'm constantly in company with the God, there's no sight of the fear anywhere. And practically, how do I do that? Is I include in my daily activities this kind of awareness. Whatever I do, I'm a soul. Whatever I do, God is with me. I'm doing this, God's hand is with me. And that practice slowly builds up your fearlessness. And the more practice you do, the more fearless you become. And see, look at this picture here. No sign of fear anywhere. All these are friends, Bagheera, the Baloo, nice, beautiful scene. And Mowgli is actually a soul conscious soul. He doesn't know that he's a human being. He knows that he's a bear. <laughs> so that's, that's more like a soul conscious thing. And in company with the not the supreme, but the friends, basically. And the constant, he is constantly living in, uh, in uh, situations like that. Even if the danger comes from behind, he doesn't know. He's there always. Balu is always there to help. <laughs> so that. Okay, let's go to number five. Remembrance. Remembrance means... Uh, uh, remembering God or being uh, being in company with God, that remembrance. And uh, all of us do that. And uh, what happens with the remembrance is uh, what do you what do you get when you when you remember God? you you become pure, you become knowledgeful, uh, virtuous, powerful, all that. But that's that's not an important point. That doesn't give your words the power. I can become knowledgeful, virtuous, powerful, but that does not give power to what I'm speaking. What gives me power is remembrance as I'm speaking. 
Okay. So as I'm talking to you, if I'm in awareness of that God's love, that is real power because that then I'm talking from a higher place. And then his love or whatever I'm communicating with God will come into my words in a very subtle way. The words will be the same, but you will feel that God's love. When I'm, when I'm feeling the God's love inside and talking to you, you will feel it. So that gives you a power. And what it's called is it, it uh, is a, like a power of the sword of knowledge. You can be a PhD in the knowledge, but if you do not have this remembrance as you are delivering your, your uh, knowledge, that words will not have that power. Uh, the masses can be touched with this instrument, with this tool. A person can just talk all the knowledge and people will not get it. But another person, can just say one or two words and the whole thousands of people can get drawn towards that. And uh, you know, in our practice, we have all dadis, they're like that. They're little words that they speak. We feel that power in their words. And so that, and to, so to learn this, we need to have that accurate remembrance of God. Next uh, tool for becoming confident is uh, I need to be very satisfied, contented. I need to say, this is all good. Uh, whatever thought comes in my mind after I speak, I need to put a full stop there. I don't need to start to analyze things. That's what I need to do. Because uh, if I have a habit of analyzing things, then it can take me in an opposite direction. We have a bad, bad habit of churning. The two, bad, two things that we churn, and that's really bad. One is churning the praise, and second is churning on the mistakes. I can after every statement, I can, if I have a habit of churning, then I can think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, oh, they liked it. Both these are bad because if I turn on my praise, actually I'm, I'm becoming body conscious. I'm taking credit. I'm not doing service anymore. And so if I'm taking credit, I will have to take the loss also. You know, somebody will blame me and it will hurt me. That. Turning too much on the mistake, it's bad. It's good and bad, I would say. It's bad because it puts you down. And it's good because it uh, tells you, okay, this is, uh, this is how you need to improve. So what do you do actually? Uh, you need to, if you have to uh, turn on the mistake, do it for one second. I learned it from one of the uh, sharings from, I don't know, but uh, one of the dadis or seniors used to say that, that I think it was our mama who said that if you made a mistake and if you have to repent, repent it for one second. So I love that. And so, yeah, it is good, repent so you can improve but then don't do it too much. Otherwise you put you down and you, you cannot get up. And the most important part, aspect of this contentment is uh, you become better. If you, if you put a, learn to put a full stop, you can, you can uh, become every, uh, every task that you do, you become better and better. Uh, in, the, in the speech, when I'm talking, if I use this uh, uh, tool, then my every statement will be better than before. So because I did not uh, judge myself on anything, whatever, whatever I did, it was perfect. It was good. That's it. 
And this is the uh, number seven, obedience, courage. I just uh, put uh, tied them together because I thought that it, uh, they can be put together like that. Uh, so many opportunities come, uh, come in life. And uh, each of them have like a unique uh, a strangeness or unfamiliarity. And so a lot of time what happens is we, uh, we uh, tend to stay away from, from those things. Although they are good opportunities for me to learn and be better, I, I say no and I move away from that. Actually, if you take on those opportunities, then, uh, then what happens is you are uncovering some hidden talents within you or new skills will be, uh, will, you will develop by doing that. So go out of your comfort zone and say yes. In the service field, you say, uh, you know, yes, sir, and do it. And so even if you did not know how to, this, this is my first uh, debut uh, a speech like this. And so I said, yes. And I feel that, yeah, I'm learning something. Something is just uh, uh, coming out of me by, doing, by saying that, yes. <clears throat> so don't say no, say yes. <laughs> the more equipped you, you are, the more confident you will become. Every new task that you take on, you will learn something new, you'll become, you'll become better. And so uh, there's one, uh, another adjective that I would add to that title as newness, obedience, courage, newness. Whatever you're doing, bring some newness in it and uh, new skills will arise from inside and you'll become better. And the more equipment you have, the better confident you, you will become. In the battlefield, if the soldier has all these equipments, different kinds of equipment, he'll feel very powerful. Versus if he had one or two things, you know, he'll feel a he'll feel, uh, little bit not that confident. So you need to get equipped. That's what you need to do. Okay, so that's the summary. And so these are all the problems that we deal with as we try to become confident. And these are all the solutions for that. For that. We talked about all these things. The number one and number two uh, things that we need to learn to become confident is soul consciousness and self-respect. These are the most important things. Just by learning to be soul conscious, you can overcome all the left side problems, all of them. And self-respect actually fine tunes uh, you, and then you can, uh, you can become really uh, a confident person. And we're talking about confidence, but this same format and the same virt uh, virtues or tools that we talked about, we can use them to overcome many other things, not just uh, uh, feeling not confident. We can do many other. And so that's the understanding part. And I'm sure there is some, there is a lot more about this, but this I found that this is the essence of uh, what we need to become confident. And then we will go uh, next going to the, uh, the second part where, uh, where we experience that confidence. We experience, so it'll be two exercises. Uh, one is uh, experience to be so conscious. And second exercise is uh, uh, experience the self-respect. 
why it is important to experience is uh, once you experience something, then then it becomes a um, something that you tasted. So unless you taste something, you would not go for it. You cannot go for it. So that is the most important part to experience. If you have never experienced feeling soul conscious, you cannot meditate. You have to become soul. You have to feel how a soul uh, feels. Then only you can meditate. So these are the two aspects. So we'll go into that. And before that, if anybody has a question, I can answer briefly before we go to the next one. Yes, Gita. Uh, I don't have a question, but I'm going back to the second point uh, where you say concentration power. Um, you said thoughts. Uh, I wrote T E A M and then thoughts, emotions, and what else? What A stands for and what M stands for? Thoughts, emotions, yes. attitude, memory. Attitude. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Dr. Satish Gupta, uh, he's our senior brother. <clears throat> uh, he uses this a lot. He, he calls it as a team. Team. Our mind has team. That's what he says always. Mm -hmm. I use that. Thoughts, emotions, attitude, memory. Yes. Uh, we'll okay. we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about this in a little bit more detail in a second. Okay, so that's our second part, so exercise. And uh, so the question is, who is talking? And so just think for uh, half a minute and tell, just tell yourself, just find an answer for yourself, don't have to say. Who is talking? Look at that uh, body language. Look at all the high quality people in front. And what do you think? Who is talking? All right. So my answer is this is a, a powerful soul who is talking. That is it. This is a powerful soul who is talking. Not the name. You don't want to give this name a name. We are not talking about body. We are talking about the soul. So you can tell how the soul can communicate. This is actually a royal court. I think it is a royal court of one of the Middle East countries. And this is our Dadi Janki. Yes, and it's... Um in Bahrain and Bahrain, yes. Those are all sheikhs. Yes. They're yes. all sheikhs. And they just fell in love with Dadi. Yes. So they're Singapore. these like six foot tall sheikhs and she's four foot three or something. I mean she's <laughs> tiny. She's tiny. She Daddy comes to here for on me. I mean she's re, we have, we're we celebrating her anniversary, one year of her ascension. She uh, passed away last year, but she is alive in our hearts. I can't believe how much she's alive in my heart. She's such a great soul. Thank you. That's such a good way to put it. Who is this? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So, yes. This uh, is a powerful soul. That's it. Yeah, when I was looking at that picture, I was actually trying to zoom it and see their expressions of the crowd. They're smiling. And I'm guessing that she was saying something maybe a little bit funny, which makes sense to them or whatever. But it shows that she is not in awe of any one of them. Yes. And they are like listening to her very intently. Mm -hmm. They're all focused and smiling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can see how the soul communicates right there. This is how the soul communicates. 
unlike all other you know leaders who talk in this world that's different than this one this is totally different okay so exercise the soul consciousness um <clears throat> why it is important to become or experience that soul consciousness. Uh, most of the time we are body conscious and uh, because we live in this world and our experience of life is through this body. And so we feel body conscious. Um, and that's why it is important to experience how it feels as a soul. We, because we never felt it before. And if you have never felt it as a soul, how are you going to connect to the Supreme Soul? All that. And so experience of that is number one. And once you experience, then you can practice and you become better. And so we're going to uh, do this very short uh, meditation. Uh, where uh, we, we, can, we will uh, become so conscious. And before that, I want to just share something here. Uh, this is the picture uh, that I took in the, in the Dubai International Airport. Uh, this is the, actually the picture of Dubai. You see how detailed that buildings and everything is there. If you look, if you zoom in, you can see every little thing that you find in Dubai. And uh, this is a, it just catches my attention. So it's a great pictures I wanna include here. Uh, why is because I took inspiration from that and uh, I made a, a picture of my own. So that's the Dubai International. Let me just escape here. This is what I made. And uh, <clears throat> this, the, uh, the bottom part here is the, is our world. This is the world. I added some little birds and everything, a rainbow, whatever. But this is uh, from inspired from uh, that artist. His name is Abdullah Lutfi Emirati. So he's a he's a artist that I saw his picture. I did not know, but I took a picture and I liked it. Uh, so it, this is our world right here, and uh, there are two people here, and uh, this one is me, and this is another person, and each of us are carrying the like a sort of mountains with us. And this guy, I did not show, but I showed my mountain here. And uh, this is actually my inner world here. This is my mind, my heart, and my uh, deep habit, deep rooted habits right here. So this is, this is my inner world. This is my world I live here. I always have lived in the world that is below this level right here, always. Never gone out of this thing. And so all my perceptions, everything is through my awareness of me as, as this one, living in this world, having this kind of thoughts, having this kind of feelings and uh, habits. And so, and so I suffer ups and downs of life because my, uh, communication with the other is through my mind and heart. I, I feel, I say something, and then both these, my, uh, my emotions, my uh, thoughts are all uh, affected by my, my uh, deep habits. They constantly affect these things. And in a very subtle way, I, uh, my and this deep down is true me right here a little point right here that's true me and uh and this is the star supreme soul but that's 
that's me, real me. And I have never experienced me, that, that little soul that I am. But actually, that little me is also influencing everything, influencing my habits, my heart, my mind, my behavior, my relations, everything, in a very subtle way. But I am not aware of that. I'm not aware that peace is coming from that little point. I think that peace is coming from outside. I think it is coming from the sun that is rising. No. It is coming from that little point. So, but I had never known myself like that. And so what happens is uh, one day, this little star comes very close, the star of the Supreme Soul. And when that star comes very close, that stimulates the, my inner qualities. And I begin to experience myself in a more overt way. Until, until that star came near me, I was experiencing that peace and love, but not more than a subtle way. But once the star comes in close proximity to me, I feel that love in a very tangible way. I feel that peace and I become aware of myself. I become aware of true me when that star comes close to me. And so this is what we want to learn by uh, uh, when we say we want to become so conscious. I want to be conscious that this is my body, this is my world, but that's me right there. That is me. And this is my God, my father. That's becoming so conscious. So we're going to, I'm going to get off this slide and I'm going to lead into this little meditation. So, get uh, keep that uh, picture that we saw a minute ago into your mind and think of how you are sit back relax and withdraw your attention from the world outside And look at yourself under the cover of your body. Beyond the layers of thoughts, emotions, and habits. a true living being, the real you. That is immune to death and disease. Untouched by any impurities of this world. because it is in constant communication with that supreme power. You are constantly connected with the supreme soul. And through that connection, you are a powerful being. And you have the power to influence 
every thoughts, word, action, relations. You have the power to transform. You have the innate qualities of peace, love, purity. Wisdom, virtues, power. And you remain constant in happiness and sorrow in praise and defamation. You remain constant. Keep this awareness always. And let it be a constant, never ending awareness, whatever you do. With this experience, we can overcome all the problems that we talked about. And uh, we will go into the second exercise. That is self-respect. <clears throat> So self-respect is, uh, you know, my, I thought about the definition as what is my assessment of myself in my true awareness? That is self-respect. So this is, this is a, a second important aspect that we need to know. Once I know that I'm a soul, then how does it uh, get, uh, converted into success in my life. If I know I'm a soul, how does it help me? Right? So this is how. Uh, the self-respect means what kind of a soul I am. An example is uh, the two statements would be, I'm a soul or I'm a peaceful soul. So when I say I'm a peaceful soul, that is a self-respect. And I'm a soul, it's just the I'm a soul, soul consciousness. And so <clears throat> why it is important to know about the self-respect? Because everything depends on what I think about myself, everything, the whole, uh, your thought process, your actions, everything, how you think, how you feel, what you do, all depends on this these two aspects, what you think you are and uh, what quality uh, soul you are. It depends on these two aspects. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, so uh, let me self-respect, yeah. Um, so if I, if I say that I am a powerful soul, for example, then how does it uh, uh, how does it affect me? I'm a powerful soul. Uh, ordinarily, if I think, I feel that that's not right. I don't feel powerful because that's the ordinary way of thinking. But when you are in a soul conscious stage, 
<clears throat> you know that you are not, not a body, you are a soul, and you are truly uh, a powerful soul. <clears throat> and uh, because that's the absolute truth. And so the question is, how do you know that that is right? You know, if I say I'm a powerful soul, how do you know that is right? Because unless and until you know for sure that is right, you will not accept that fact. And only when you accept that, then it becomes part of you, then it becomes, uh, it brings goodness to your life. And so how you know is this one, this picture right here. Which child I am? Uh, so remember who you are. How do you know that you are a powerful soul? Because my father said so. That's why I know I'm a powerful soul. That is it. So this lion cub is there and uh, having a little inferior moments. But father says, you are, remember you are, who you are. <clears throat> so same thing happens to us, the souls. We, uh, we um, feel um, we feel inferior sometimes. <clears throat> we feel deficient. We feel that we lack something. We feel weak uh, in many aspects. But that is our because because our body consciousness. Because we are thinking ourselves. We are thinking from that uh, this aspect. Uh, that one we are thinking in this uh, area we're not thinking here so our stage our intellect is looking here and here and we think we don't know anything we are very weak i'm i'm so lost but when intellect rises up to here and looks at me then yes then you know that you are a powerful soul <clears throat> right so that's how that is why it is important to to know uh, the self-respect and self-respect are the titles that uh, god gives you you know and so we're going to learn um we're going to learn how to feel uh, that self-respect uh, there's another picture here uh, yeah, that one, <clears throat> see that? This is uh, another picture of that same uh, country. And you can see in the middle how uh, that soul is standing there in the self-respect. That self-respect makes her stand over there like that. Somebody else, if I'm standing there, I'll shake probably. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I'm not there yet but that's how you want to be, self-respect. Okay, so self-respect is an awareness and how does that awareness work? That's, I'll, I'll give you a little a glimpse of that. And so when I'm aware, it's a busy slide, so don't try to read, but I will say something. <clears throat> when I'm aware that I am, uh, I'm a powerful soul, for example, then how do I feel? I feel that power, right? And that feeling actually fills the entire environment and it surrounds everything around me, the soul, the point. It, it surrounds every organ of this body and it goes beyond the body also. It, does not get limited by any boundary. That feeling or the, uh, that, the, the, the environment that is filled by, by that feeling, in Hindi, they call it a vritti, vritti. Uh, in English, it is called attitude. But that uh, atmosphere that I create within, it does a lot of things. It surrounds all the organs. It affects all the organs. So if I feel powerful, my heart will feel powerful. My muscles will feel powerful. 
my you know, legs will work stronger like that. And this power not only does effect on my body, it, it just goes out also. In the outer atmosphere, it will have effect. The people, the soul who come into this uh, environment will feel that power. And it goes into their attitude. So that's how we are connected with each other. Then every thought that emerges from my mind, it goes through this uh, atmosphere and it is colored by that atmosphere. Every word that I hear from somebody, it goes through this atmosphere and it is colored by that atmosphere. So if my self-respect is I am a powerful being, every thought that generates after that will have power. Every word that I hear, I will feel power. Every sight that I see, I will feel power. So anything going out from me, anything coming to me is colored by that atmosphere. And, and so that is a very powerful thing, the vritti. And that is based on my feeling, how I feel, my stage, and that is based on my awareness, how I, what I think I am. It's based on all these things based on that. Um, and then if my thought is colored by that atmosphere, my actions will be like that. So if I, if I feel power, powerful, my thoughts will be powerful, my actions will be powerful. And similarly, you know, if I feel down depressed, my thoughts will be depressed. Anybody, some, even if somebody uh, says a nice word, I will take it negatively because it goes through this atmosphere uh, that I have created inside. And then I look at that as in a negative way. So it's very powerful to know these things. So um, awareness is everything. And that self-respect is that we need to learn. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do that second exercise. And uh, while we're doing that, uh, look at this picture here. This is our another Dabi with uh, Mother Teresa. And that's how the soul to soul communication occurs. These are not two different people talking to each other. They, they probably don't even know the language of each other, but they look at the way they are. No. So that's very powerful soul to soul communication. So when one soul is communicating with the other, um, again, I would like to you to go to that, look at this picture here, that one, that one. So when I am communicating with this person, body to body talk happens. When I elevate my stage to here and then talk to this person, it's a soul to the physical world communication that happens. And when I'm here and I'm talking, my attitude is full of everything that is here. My attitude will, will be full of love, you know, because God's love is coming to me. My attitude will be completely full of love. So no matter how this person is angry, I have loveful attitude to this guy, this person. And so that's how I want to be, I want to raise my awareness to that level. And so let us, um, I think I'm done with all the slides. So I'll just, yeah, that's it. This is another one I like, soul to soul communication. This is Dalai Lama, everybody knows him. This is our daddy. So to soul. Also between them is Lord Enolds. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 
he's Lord Reynolds, he's a very high profile uh, dignitary of the UK. Oh, yeah. So that's, so I'm yeah. going to stop the share. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's a very short meditation. Visualize yourself as a sh shining star in the center of your forehead. <clears throat> a shining star in the center of your forehead. Radiating prosperity and power. You are radiating prosperity and power. Feel that richness and authority. You are in total control. Nothing moves without your permission. Your mind is quietly awaiting your command. Your intellect is watching you with love and respect. and your deep memories are emerging peace and harmony. All your sense organs and body cells, they are ready to serve. Feel that love and respect. And with that, sense that responsibility that you have, how much care that you have to take of this body, how much love you have to give to your, yourself. Recognize that. And also rec recognize and remember that you are a very powerful being. The child of almighty ocean of love. Feel that unconditional love, joy, and lightness. And match that with the responsibility that you have. Keep these memories alive. And while doing that, bring into your awareness all the unfinished tasks that you have in this world, in this physical world. While keeping the memories of how powerful you are. Think of all the problems and things that had bothered you so far. 
and see how little these are, how little these problems are, and how easily you can overcome. Feel that confidence. See yourself in the front of the crowd. Om Shanti. Thank you so much, Binod. Um, I'd like to open this up now for uh, questions or insights that you perhaps uh, took. Sorry, I didn't mean to replace. I wanted to share. <laughs> uh, thank you. We know that was just lovely. I really uh, love that um, image you have with the cluttered mind of concerns of thoughts and worries and uh, attitudes and sense scars or habits. And then it all just disintegrates when you're soul conscious and um, relate to others and the task from that perspective. That's really powerful. Um, I think it'd be great if we had some questions or or perhaps some insights, like I said, that to your own experience, you know, that perhaps uh, what was offered and shared tonight um, gave you some, you know, good tools. Uh, so who would like to share? or any questions. And you could put it in the chat if you want to just type a question in the chat. Um, I have a question. I mean, um, I know that because it was interesting when you said accuracy about that and um, or attachment, that's what it was, fearlessness and attachment. Um, you know, that's interesting because when we have an expectation or dependency on something that is temporary, I will feel insecure. But if my identity or connection, because we need to have something that supports us, it, it's just something very natural. And, but when it's based on soul consciousness and God consciousness, then there's stability. And also I feel when we have a sense of purpose, when, when we really feel clear about what we're willing to live for or die for or whatever that passion might be, the words just come and you can face a whole army, you can face anyone and, and it just comes. Um, so uh, thank you, that was good, I like that idea of attachment and fear. And the second uh, child of the attachment is uh, worry, <clears throat> worry, fear and worry. That yeah, it's a very insecure state, isn't it? Yeah, it just opens the door. 